Welcome to episode one of Trash or Treasure. What we're going to do is take a look at older or discontinued or just seemingly unnoticed pieces of gear that seem to have gone under the radar or been forgotten about. And we're going to pick them up and see, does it deserve a second look? And is it a piece of past treasure that maybe is something you want to try and pick up for yourself? So on the operating table today is the first series Rudy Sarzo Signature PV base. Now, the quick history on this one is that Rudy Sarzo was an Aria Pro endorser before he came to PV. When he made that switch, it's pretty clear that he wanted a lot, if not most of the appointments of the SB1000 and 900 kind of version signature that he had when he was over at Aria. You can see a similarity in the shape, the color, is pretty dead on, uh, and also just the uh, the overall appointments and construction. Uh, I have an SB1000 a while back, and the feel is really similar, but you can see things like the brass nut, the laminations, the layout, really, really similar. Now, the other part that he was apparently a fan of and that they tried to emulate were the pickups from the world-famous Alembic pickups, which you can see even the... Uh, the housings are very close to what the original Aria used and also what Alembic shapes had in a lot of their bases. This is part where I think they may have missed the mark a little bit, but we'll get to the sound here in a minute. So to give it a first uh, quick look, we've got a neck through the body, and I've popped this off so we can take a look at the circuit in a bit, but a really nice flame maple neck through the body with stringers in it. Uh, one thing I especially like about the construction is that there's not a thin joint here. It's not a scarf joint. Uh, it's all one piece, but it's molded so it's not weak like you might see in a number of neck through guitars where that's a real easy break point. This one feels really solid. Uh, again, really built well. Uh, ash body sides on it. And um, I've always been a fan of these uh, Goto bridges as well. Adjustable string spacing, and they allow for low profile to get really low action. Uh, another really attractive feature here is the ebony fingerboard. Really thick, like you don't see anymore. This is definitely when that kind of wood was more abundant and a sign of really good handmade items from the past. An obvious steal from the Aria is the cat's eye style mother of pearl fingers, fingerboard markers, which that's a great look. So in taking a look at it, what you've got is a volume, a blend, bass, mid, and treble, active EQ circuit, and then an active passive switch. The three band EQ is only active along with the active switch. So if you're in passive mode, those aren't going to do anything. Now, as far as the neck and the feel of it, this is where I feel the instrument really shines. This is a very jazz style neck. If you're familiar with that type of terminology, it means slimmer at the nut. This one's got a little bit more depth to it, but it feels incredibly solid. Uh, one of my concerns and one of my complaints about a lot of modern bases, especially some of the imports that we're getting, is because we're using younger and younger wood. And uh, it's just, I don't think of the same quality in a lot of cases, especially on some of the bargain models. It can feel lightweight or cheap, and this just feels really solid. And the other great thing about it is the edges of the fingerboard are rolled, and the fretwork on this is fantastic. Really, really good. You can tell somebody who knew what they were doing went over this, and that was PV's reputation from the factory at that time. They were putting out some amazing bases. A couple more will be featuring here on uh, Trash or Treasure. And I think you'd be surprised that they may need a second look being given to them, especially since they're going to become more and more rare. Let's check out the electronics and the sound. And this is where I feel like it falls down a little bit. Uh, one thing that if you use other PV bases or you have things from this era being like 80s through kind of late 90s is... The preamp in it is the Dynabase circuit. Now, this is the exact same circuit board that's on the Dynabase, uh, the Foundation series. Uh, you know, most of the American made bases from that era have that Dynabase preamp in it. And we're usually in combination with either the VFL or the Super Ferrite pickups. 
I actually like the Super Ferrite still. I think they're a great pickup. But for some reason, uh, Rudy decided he wanted to go with these separate ones that are exclusive to this model. And again, this is where I feel it's a bit of a, a weak spot. Uh, the funny thing is, you can really hear this if you listen to Quiet Riot in the early days. Sarzo's tone had a really kind of squawking mid-range kind of thing, a real distinct honk to it. And that's definitely been dialed into this. And like I said, I at least feel like that's kind of the weak spot. But let's take a look at it and uh, check out what the sound differences are here. So our straight passive tone with everything shut off. It's not a bad sound. I've heard much, much worse. But to me, it's a little flat sounding uh, and from something trying to pursue the Alembic heritage, I feel like it's missed the mark a little bit. But you can hear a little bit of that distinctive Sarzo style honk. But now let's check it out in active and it really becomes pronounced. <laughs> Now immediately you get a lot more clarity with the active switch in and you can really distinctly now hear that honk that I was talking about in Rudy's sound that was distinctive from the Quiet Riot days. So you hear that kind of honk honk honk. It's a very hollow strange sound. Uh, again, it's not that it's unuseful, it's just that it seems really pronounced and would take a, kind of a good bit of EQing to get it out. So speaking of EQ, let's hear what we've got going on as far as the dials. Let's start with the treble all the way up. <laughs> So again, with a different source signal, I think that might not be too bad. It's not a really high extended treble. It's more of an upper mid-range presence going into treble. I think it's a fairly useful range. And if we dial it all the way back off. Not bad. Set that back to center. Let's, the least useful I found was the mids. The frequency that they have it on, I think, just doesn't do that well if you're adding mids. If you're cutting some out, it's okay. So let's bring those all the way up. Gives kind of a woofy, kind of funky sound to it. Don't care for it too much. So let's notch them out. If you like ultra scooped, maybe that's your bag. Like I said, I found that one best left at center. And let's check out the bass all the way up. Again, a little thick and all the way out. My problem with the bass is that it seems to basically give the same effect as dialing the treble all the way out. It's They kind of cross over the same frequencies. So for me, everything set flat, maybe the treble up a little bit to give some string gain and definition is the way to go. Uh, I didn't find the center points all that great. But I think my final conclusion on this one is that even if you decide to swap out the pickups, which I probably will, and I'll probably make an update to this uh, with some new things, is honestly, this is one of the best necks I've ever played. I've played thousands of different instruments, and really, this feels good. It's ergonomic. What this is as a bass in itself, minus the electronics, is incredibly well constructed, a level of craftsmanship you're not seeing quite as much anymore. And just really a beautiful slim. Just a pleasure to play. And yeah, I've definitely played a lot worse and paid a lot more. So in my book, this one's a treasure. 
definitely pulled up. Like I said, the electronics aren't completely unusable. I'm going to upgrade them. But as far as, you know, the base in itself, I think it's definitely a beauty that uh, deserves to be rediscovered. So if you have one of these or you have questions about it or you have some experiences with them, drop me a line. Hit me up in the comments. Let's keep, let's keep this conversation going down there about the early PVs and what you think of them. I think there's probably a lot in the mix in the TL series and things like that to be rediscovered. So I'd be interested to hear your experiences with any of them, your opinions, and have you contrasted any of the old PV series back and forth to themselves. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm definitely digging this one, and uh, I will see you below in the comments. Thanks for checking it out. I'll see you on the next one.